Make the day iconic. What's up, guys? Up Come Sports, back with another banger. In this video, we're seeing what would happen if Adam Silver decided to get rid of the one and done rule and make uh, NBA prospects either go to college two years at least or go straight out of high school. So basically what I did, 2K18, I got a draft class, took out all the freshmen um, pretty much and all the redshirt uh, sophomores, redshirt juniors, seniors obviously are going to be in this draft and all international players are not affected by this rule. They just have to be, I believe it's 19 and older or there might be an exception for 18 year olds if they play professionally, but uh, here is the list pretty much of everyone who's going to be in the draft class. You can take a look, pause it if you'd like. This will probably be a very hard mock draft to do. So the Atlanta Hawks ended up getting the first overall pick. They're clearly in a rebuild. They're just going to take whoever's on the board, whoever's the best talent on the board. Um, and in this case, it would be the highest overall player, highest prospect, Luka Doncic, who in real life could go first overall, even in today's NBA draft. So um, this is a no brainer for the Hawks, taking Luka Doncic number one. Doncic plays professionally overseas in Spain. He's averaging 15.1 points, 5.2 rebounds, and 4.6 assists. Uh, playing for Real Madrid it, with uh, a lot of good competition. A lot higher level than the NCAA. So that's why he's the number one overall pick. So next we got the Phoenix Suns with the number two pick. And they really need um, a lot of positions, mainly point guard and center. But in this type of draft, since there's not many uh, young prospects or uh, players that can fill those roles, I think they go with the most talented player on the board, which would either be Miles Bridges or Mikal Bridges, depending on uh, who you think is better. But... Um, Bridges averaged 17.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 1.9 assists. And he was obviously a um, national champion with Villanova, along with Jalen Brunson. Next up, we got the Memphis Grizzlies, third pick. And um, they got some good pieces, you know, Mike Conley, Mark Gasol. Uh, they picked up Dylan Brooks in last year's draft, but uh, a lot of injuries caused them to get a top five pick. So obviously they want a nice piece who's young, but can also contribute right away. And I think Miles Bridges is just that for them. Bridges averaged 17.1 points, seven rebounds and 2.7 assists for the Michigan State uh, Spartans. They got knocked out by Syracuse in the NCAA tournament, but Bridges is probably one of the more NBA ready uh, forwards in this draft. Next up, we got the Orlando Magic, and clearly they need guards. They've got Aaron Gordon, they've got Vucevic, they've got Jonathan Isaac, nice front court. They just need some guards. And um, in this draft, Without Trey Young, without Colin Sexton being here, I think you go with a guy like Hamadou Diallo. He was a redshirt freshman for Kentucky who averaged 10 points a game, 3.6 rebounds, and 1.2 assists. But he came off the bench mostly and only played about 22 minutes per game. He would most definitely be a project because I don't see him as NBA ready. But his ceiling is very high. He can play defense and offense very efficiently. Next up, we got the Dallas Mavericks. And we all know what Dennis Smith Jr. came out to be. Eighth overall pick in last year's draft. 
I think he was a steal. They've got Harrison Barnes on a lucrative contract, but nonetheless, he he's a good scorer, a good defender. Um, Netherlands Noel did not work out for them, and they don't really have any good power forwards, so I see them taking the best available power forward. Robert Williams, he averaged uh, 10.4 points, 9.2 rebounds, 1.4 assists, and 2.5 blocks for Texas A&M. Next up, we got the Sacramento Kings. We all know who they got. De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, who I'm not going to trade in this video. Because a lot of you commented that uh, Buddy Heald is very liked by the King community. So, we're going to keep him on the team. Uh, a lot of other pieces. Willie Cauley-Stein, Scalabissier. But, um, I think they need a small forward here. Probably uh, either uh, Isaac Bonga or a uh, Bonzi Colson. Um, but Rodians Karux is probably the youngest prospect in this draft. The one who has the most room to grow. He's averaging 11.1 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 1.4 assists over in Europe. Very good player. Next up, we got the Chicago Bulls. Chris Dunn, Zach Levine. I think these two could really um, catapult the franchise forward, so they don't need anyone at those two positions. I think they need a shooting small forward. Um, they're not really too deep in small forward. They got Zipser and um, Valentine, but um, I think they take the best overall player left, Bruce Brown. He is a shooting guard, but he can play small forward. He averaged 11.4 points, 7.1 rebounds, and 4 assists for Miami. At 8, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers. And this one was a little tricky. Or is going to be a little tricky. I was thinking about it, and since there's not too many um, young prospects with a lot of potential, and... Uh, assuming LeBron James stays, they need some shooting. J.R. Smith, he can shoot Kyle Korver, but they're really inconsistent and they'll have their games, but I just think they need to add more shooters for LeBron to find. Um, that could either be Alonzo Trier, um, Devontae Graham. He's more of a point guard, though. He could play the two. We've got Grayson Allen here. Uh, he shot 37% from three on seven attempts per game at Duke his senior year. He averaged 15.5 points, 3.3 rebounds, and 4.6 assists. Overall, he doesn't turn the ball over that much. Um, I just think they go with Grayson Allen here. They need the three-point shooting. He'd be a good fit on Cleveland. Next up, we got the New York Knicks. As we all know, they drafted Frank uh, Nielakina last draft with their top 10 pick. They've got Kristaps Porzingis, who they need to build around quick. Um, I just think uh, they need some small forwards, uh, preferably some scoring small forwards. One thing I do have to say, I could see a lot more international players being drafted um, the first couple of years this rule is implemented because there's not going to be that many um, freshmen who are ready to go into the NBA and well they won't be able to unless they go straight out of high school but this rule will affect uh, that first generation obviously so I think during that span of probably two or three years when the rule is implemented so We've got a couple of uh, international prospects who could go here. Costa Mushidi from Germany, Isaac Bonga, but uh, I think Costa Mushidi is probably the better pick here for the Knicks. He's averaging 9.8 points, 3.3 rebounds, and 1.8 assists over in Europe. And finally, the Philadelphia 76ers with the Lakers pick. Really what the Sixers need is 
some type of shooting guard slash small forward who can score. Mostly shoot because they've got Mark Hill Fultz, they've got Ben Simmons, they've got Joel Embiid. They pretty much just need some scorers and someone who can play defense. And Alonzo Trier fits that role nicely here at 10. Out of U of A, he averaged 18.1 points, 3 rebounds, 3.2 assists on 38% shooting from 3-point range. One quick thing I gotta mention, Jalen Brunson was not in this draft class so I could not put him in, but he definitely could go in this top 10. Best player in college basketball, national champion, you saw his stats, let me know what you think in the comments. Remember to subscribe if you're new and make today iconic if you can.